the Pope and Young Club wants to welcome you as we rally together to ensure our bow hunting opportunities for today and tomorrow. You've come to the podcast that believes in preserving, protecting, and promoting the passion for bow hunting. Join us as we strive to be the voice of today's bow hunter. This is the Pope and Young Podcast. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Pope and Young Podcast. Jason Roundsville here, joined as always by Dylan Ray. And we have with us the CEO of Scentwalk today. We have Aaron Amber. Um, Aaron, thanks for joining us. I'm really glad to have you here as, as one of our as one of our key corporate partners. So thank you for joining us today. Yeah, thank you very much, Jason and Dylan, for inviting. And as always, I'm excited to see where this journey goes. It's much like a uh, back uh, backcountry hunt. You just never know what ridge you're going to end on. <laughs> and you know what? We try to make sure of that. <laughs> we do little curveballs in just to make sure that nobody gets too used to us. We've ended on a couple crazy ones, Jay, for sure. We, we have. I mean, you never know what we're going to talk about. Next thing, you know, one minute we're talking about bow hunting. The next thing you know, we're talking about canned smoked oysters. <laughs> you, you just never know what you're going to get around here. What is, uh, just so that we have an understanding, what, what is your personal philosophy on canned smoked smoke oysters? Well, I don't have a lot. I, I like fresh oysters. I have not been around a lot of canned smoke oysters, but it sounds like uh, it's a saltine and a cold beer away from uh, perfection. So <laughs> might have to go all on right. the Christmas vacation list. All right. Well, well all right, Dylan. We know who we're not inviting to the Christmas party now, I guess. Yeah, no kidding. So, well, I'll tell you what, let's let's just go um, maybe for some who don't, know or, or or have been paying attention give us uh, a background um self and how you got to where you are with with scentlock yeah well thank you very much and again thanks for the time today um it's been a joy you know um certainly i'll lead by this is uh once you're in the outdoor industry it's uh really hard to get away um and i i say that with affection because i'll tell you the friendships and relationships that I've curated over the last, I'd say, 20 plus years have been invaluable, not only great professional relationships, but great friendships. And, you know, I spent uh, 15 or so years with uh, Cabela's back in the day, pre-public and even post-public of growing retail stores and got a, a great opportunity to be in a lot of functions of that business and, and create some of the best friendships of my life. And, you know, that common, uh, green blood, if you will, the, the Cabela's roof and, and the stories and experiences, the laugh and the tears and the excitement. And it, it was great, great. And I got a great opportunity to get ex exposed in the outdoors. And for the last, uh, I guess, six, maybe going on seven years, I've been at Nexus Outdoors. And uh, when I came in the company, uh, we were sent lock and, and now we have uh, multiple brands under our roof. And uh, I'll tell you what, just a great opportunity to lead a great group of, group of people. And you know, the Scent Lock is one of our key cornerstone brands is, is you know, just I, I grew up with, you know, first green liner suit. Uh, that was my first exposure in the brand. And and uh, now, I, now I'm here today uh, running a successful company and, and a great brand and great product and, and great colleagues uh, like yourself uh, that I get to interact with. So it's been a fun journey. You know, and, and the one thing I'll just throw out there is, you know, there's a lot of good companies out there, and we have the the very good privilege to work with the ones who are at a point where they, uh, it's almost you reach a point in the outdoor industry where, gee, you appreciate what it's provided you, um, you know, in friendships and experiences, you know, all that, and, and there's a time where you give back. That's the one thing, um, you know, with you guys. From the moment you came in, uh, you know, as a corporate partner, company, it was, it, hey, how can, how can we partner up? How can we make this work better for everyone? And and that's a, a privilege to have partners that are that are that appreciated. 
Yeah, Jason, and you know, I've told Dylan this story, and I'm not sure you've heard it. You know, my my dad's been a Pope and Young uh, life member, and you know, he was a a senior. I remember him becoming a a senior member back when I was a kid, and I remember the the single posters on the wall that Pope and Young used to do. I still go back and look at all the, the different books from my dad got from the biennial conventions, and and you know, he always bought the cover every year in a in a in a in a painting so looking going back home and seeing my dad and seeing all the years that the the cover of the the book on the walls and you know he's been an advocate and a senior member for a long time and that's how i got involved as a kid just you know we we see it we get imprinted from our from our parents and you know he's a big advocate of, of what the organization stood for and you know it's definitely changed over the years um but i was uh, i didn't join until 2000 and I think I was a very first member um, in 2000. I was very key on making sure the first A and the and and my number was the very first one issued in 2000. So I got a little bit later start on it, but um, definitely I'm a regular member right now and couldn't couldn't be happier to support you from a personal perspective. Um, and then obviously in my professional position, you know, kind of Dylan working on us hard and coming to a. a perspective where I can actually help influence that on our end and be a corporate sponsor. So I'm um, excited for sure. Yeah. And it's, you know, one of, one of the programs, if, if people aren't aware of it, um, and this is just, this goes to show the innovation and how partnerships work is, you know, we started working together and uh, we kind of we developed a program it was it was sent lock it was pope and young and and bear archery all kind of working together on this program to help grow the pope and young membership and um you know if, if you haven't heard about it shame on us for not telling everybody but i'm i'm seeing it places and you know we started a partnership gosh i, I don't even think it's been a whole year yet i think do you remember when it uh, affinity debuted? Was it in the first part of quarter two? Um, I believe so. Yeah, I think it was yeah. uh, just about April, probably. Okay, and so this is one of those things where where we're looking at at ways we can think where we can work work together and partner, and uh, you know we started the promo where when. When somebody buys, I believe it's five hundred dollars in scent lock gear, which is great yep. gear to begin with, and then uh, work together so that that underwrites a one-year Pope and Young membership for folks. And I, I we started talking about this. I, I, it, it, I, I love the idea. I did not anticipate the response to be what it was. And um, we've had so far, Dylan, do you, get, do you know the official number? I should have got that from Shelly. 194. 100, we have had over 194 people take advantage of that, of that promo with Snapbox, which yeah, is, exciting. I mean, that, that's, that exceeds the expectations I had. And especially, the, you know, you kind of hope, that you get a program going that then, you know, get some traction. But at this point in time, I, I, I just, I'm, I'm very surprised and, and thrilled at how well that's doing. And so we appreciate you guys, you know, coming up and helping us develop that. It went yeah, out Jason. March, March 16th, Jason is when that launched. Okay. Now what we need to do is maybe we, you know, since Fred bear was one of our, you know, uh, members back in the day and we still do a lot with bear archery and they're really good supporters as well but man maybe we need to call them and have them on and say hey Sintlock is kicking your butt what's going on here yeah. <laughs> so Aaron do you want to make that call or should, should we do that maybe conference <laughs> in? three on say, one that sounds good we'll say hey do you, you guys know, need it do you guys need advice from Aaron or like do you need <laughs> I mean, business direction. What's up? Like, <laughs> yeah. so no, what we, and we appreciate all of our partners, but it's, it's just neat. Cause you just never know what's going to, what's going to gain the traction. And so when you see things like that, it's, 
I, I mean, it's just a, a win-win and, and we're excited and I know you guys are, and we appreciate that. So. Well, Jason, the other thing, you know, I, what I like about it is, is planting seeds for the future. So let's hope that these hundred and let's call it 200 people continue on the membership. And, you know, sometimes we don't know what we don't know. So I'm hoping that, that, that our, our partnership help in combination with you get people involved and exposed, if you will, to the organization. And then, you know, there's not a drop off and they continued forward. And, you know, I think some people's eyes will be opened up a little bit about, you know, about what y'all are doing and, and they'll get your, you know, your magazine and they'll be able to learn more about what the organization's into and what they're driving and what they're doing on behalf of us as bow hunters. And, and uh, sometimes planting that seed is, is really important. So I'm, I'm hoping, you know, we have a future crop of, you know, return people and then we'll probably do this again with you next year and hopefully continues building and we get the other partners involved as well. And it's just, as you guys know, and I don't need to profess to you, membership is everything and, and it really helps the organization accomplish its goals and objectives and fight on behalf of all of us. Just well, about 10%, thing, yeah. just about 10% of those people automatically extended their membership. Just so you know, Aaron. Excellent. Which is huge. That's, that's more than uh, I would bet if we were to, I would bet that's more than our standard member coming in through, through our other channels. So that's really, and, and, you know, that gives us an opportunity to, to show them who we are. And as the, you know, voice for bow hunters in North America, the more people we have, the more members, the more bow hunters we're, we're out there representing, the bigger our voice is. And so it's, you know, it's, uh, it's not a huge financial commitment to join for a year. Um, but we don't take it lightly and we are, we're representing all the hunters out there on from you know, national issues with the Pittman Robertson act and, and the way those funds are utilized everything down to, you know, local issues that, that we're able to connect with, with our other organizations to support. So it's and Jim, uh, Jason made no mistake. The listeners that are hearing this today, I mean, um, that's a couple of the issues of the hundreds of issues that we face as outdoors people um, uh, continue to pursue our passion and have an organization fighting for us. And, you know, that's what part of, you know, I suspect of what the membership goes towards is for people being at organizations such as Pope and Young, being eyes wide open to the issues at hand and, and bringing things forth that are under the radar that we as sportsmen need to get after. So, uh, you know, that, that's a, that's a big deal for all of us in the future not only what we love today, but future generations. So that's why I'm a big fan of it, for sure. Yeah, what Pope and Young wants to do is make sure that that our kids and grandkids have the opportunities that we had. You know, we've had, had privileges with some of the best wildlife populations in history, season lengths, season opportunities the opportunity to hunt things that you know weren't available 60 years ago and so we just want to make sure that there are opportunities moving forward for those that choose to to follow on amen to that and that's something jason you know and not that it's not that it's specifically come out of anybody's uh, mouth yet but but you know you hear that like, well, what's my 45 bucks do? Like, what does that even get me? And it's like, it gets you your right to hunt. Like, wh what do you mean? What does it get you? Like, dude, I dropped way too much money on all my other hunting gear for then the right to hunt be taken away. So for, for $45 a month, I'm helping to ensure my future as a bow hunter. And I, and I tell people as nicely as I can, like, if you're not a member of Pope and Young, if you're not a member of Rocky Mountain Elk, Rocky Mountain Elk Foundation of, of Ducks Unlimited of, you know, you name it. If you're not a member of those things and those rights get taken away from you, you have no room to complain. Like you have no room to say, Oh man, like, dang it. I, I loved hunting. And, and now my rights are taken away. If you're not doing something to help protect those rights, you have no room to complain if those rights are taken away. No. And you don't have to choose just one, you know, it's not like, 100%. Oh, well, I, I I can only be a, a Rocky Mountain Elk Foundation member, or I can only be a Mule Deer Foundation member. You know, and here, especially with us, 
you know, we're kind of, we're, we're the only bow hunting organization out there. And, you know, we've got fortunately 60 years in the, in the books of helping people. So, or helping bow hunters. So that's what we want to continue to, to do. And along the way, the records program continues to, to climb. I can't believe as I'm looking at how many commitments we're getting to come to convention this year, we're going to have what is going, what is likely to be the biggest ever display of archery taken trophies in the history of Pope and Young. They're talking about potentially having 200 of the biggest animals taken in one place at one time. Sounds like I mean, a must see event. It is. And a hundred, I'm telling you, a hundred is a lot. When you see a hundred amazing trophy class animals in one place at one time, that's a lot. 200 or, or even approaching 200 is going to be crazy. You can't even imagine so, that. No. And, and we ran out of space last year. So we're going to have to put but, them in your hotel room, Jason. They'll have we're to, have visit. to put them somewhere. Those have to say, it's, hey, go, uh, go to Jason's hotel room to see the rest of the animals. They're all stacked there. <laughs> yeah. Bring, bring it, bring him a Coors Light and, and he'll let you look. I'm, I'm there. <laughs> so, I'm there. <laughs> yeah. So, no, we're, but I'll tell you what, we're excited about convention. Um, it, it's going to be one of those things. I know we're working on it every day right now. Uh, we're in that mode. Um, really hoping, hoping you guys get a chance to make it. Um, yeah, we, we've exciting. got a the big exciting. I haven't been to the biannual convention in, in quite a few years. I think the last time I went was back in uh, Omaha, and that was a long time ago. So I'd like to get back, and certainly um, it's uh, great to see everyone and, and great energy and, and for a great purpose. So yeah, we we like to call anything Omaha and and sooner. I was like pre COVID. And now, we're, you know, there's been pre-COVID and then Reno. This is Reno number two. And last time, um, you know, it was shaping up actually to be pretty good. And then, you know, it got, got we had to cancel Virginia. Then we ha had to move Reno back into July. And it was still a solid event. We were very happy with it. And th actually thrilled coming out of that event. Um, the folks that showed up had a great time and enjoyed it. And since we got back and unloaded the trucks, we've been working to make Reno number two even bigger and better. And so at this point, we're expecting to sell out. We've got, um, I think we've got about 100 vendor booths that we're expecting to fill. And uh, so it's, it's, uh, it's going to be a good time, that's for sure, and some unprecedented displays. So, we're excited. Yeah, all, the, all the fears behind us, you know, we we kick off um, ATA show, so the Archer Trade Association, which I'm sure some people know about. That's in January, the second week of January this year. So we're hoping things are back to normal with that as well. That's our first intersection point with a lot of uh, our dealers, and then uh, yeah, shot shows after that. And, and uh, you know the Pope be young. So there's a lot of things going on this year. Let's just hope everyone has safe travels and when any more zoo zoo like activities happen out there to get people's way of enjoying what they want to go to. Yeah, and it's you know there's a I think everybody has a relief that, that we get to go back at it and you know get to to be on the road and and see people and look them in the eye and and shake a hand and. Um, uh, there's also you see just a little residual um i i won't call it, it's not fear so much it's just folks that are cautious maybe and just and it's not necessarily covid it's just i think you know you mentioned shot show and i attended that for years and and I'm not sure that there was a year that I didn't come out of shot show with some kind of thing. I mean, there was one year that I'm not sure what it was. I thought it was the bubonic plague or something after shot show because <laughs> everybody caught it. I mean, everybody you talked to was sick for, you know, two weeks after that. And so uh, I think it's just, you know, I mean, I'm not that 
COVID was good for anything, but I think just reminding people, hey, you know, this is, there's stuff that's been around long before COVID and will be be around long after COVID, but you can't stop your life just for, you know, the sake of, of catching a virus or something. Right. So I think, uh, I know I'm personally excited about it. I've got a, a pretty busy January, February uh, show schedule, ATA and, and uh, Dallas Safari Club, SCI, Wild Sheep Foundation, a lot of different things. So I'm, I'm excited to get out and see people again. Well, tell us about, uh, now I know you got a chance to do some hunting this fall. Mm-hmm. Tell us how that's been going so far. So yeah, I had a great fall this year. It started out really great in September and got a great opportunity to be in New Mexico. And, you know, I, I tell anyone, you know, when you can start September in the elk woods, the cool nights and mornings and warm days, and it just was a heck of a hunt. And there's just no, nothing like a bugling bull. And I got to, uh, you know, up front, I had a, the bull I ended up shooting ended up being about five yards to the left of me and, and bugling and, and fortunately, you know, when they're that close, you don't get a shot. Yeah. You know, it's, it's uh, kind of told the bullets on him at this point, if he dies and, you know, he's a 350 bull. So and he was about a foot higher than me. And so you can imagine he tips his horns back and he's bugling. It's just like, you feel that re- reverberation in your body. It's just yeah. like, holy smokes, this is crazy. And luckily I got, I, I luckily uh, another bull was on the cow herd behind him and, another bull bugle behind and he swung and started walking back. And I'm like, well, we'll see what happens. He tipped his horns back again and bugle and I drew. And, you know, of course he runs about 10 yards. So he's like 15, 17 yards from me with his leg forward. And, and uh, it happened pretty quick, but you know, we'd hunted hard. That was day four. And so it started out great. And, and frankly, I had a little tougher time in the whitetail woods. Uh, my highlight of my fall uh, deer hunting season was my son shooting a hell of a whitetail in South Dakota. And, you know, I, he took some time off from school at a, uh, over Thanksgiving and I got to sit next to him when he's, uh, you know, hunting and got to share a lot That's of cool. stories with him and got to see that go down. And you guys know how this works is it's one thing having, you know, telling the story uh, when you're the only one that was there, but man, it's a lot more fun looking at those horns that are sitting in front of our fireplace right now and his tax army bill's killing me. That's another story, but (laughs) to look at that deer and and watch his eyes light up. He's back from school right now. He just finished up the fall semester at Michigan and, and his football team's doing good. Seeing him talking about looking at those horns and us sharing that story together, you know, it kind of goes back to, you know, what we started the conversation with. It's like, how do we get more, you know, how do we get more involvement in the club? And, you know, certainly a secondary is how we get more kids into our sports so that next generation. So to see that kid, you know, light up when we're talking about that, that Bucky shot and I was right there. So, you know, all in all, I, that was my goal during deer seasons, making sure he has a great experience. And uh, we had a, we had a heck of a year overall. And um, it, it uh, certainly is a reason to look forward to another year. That's, you know, that, that's the thing I'm sure, you know, Dylan and Jason can relate. Um, it, it seemed like the hunting season used to be so long. And now before we know it, we look back and another year has gone by and another run yeah. has ended. And, and, and we have next year to look forward to. Yeah. Another year's going to, I look back and a decade's gone by. <laughs> so, I'm sure that. Oh, I'm looking at, you know, I've got a bunch of, photos in my shop and i look at some of these and i'm like man i i remember that just like it was yesterday it was 11 years ago i'm like that's just so it does it, it flies now how old's your son my son's uh 20 years old 20 okay and so um it's it's nice when you get to spend some time with with your dad or your son and and especially you know at that age because college has a way of of taking people away a lot more so than it has bringing them home i think in cases yeah that literally and figuratively yeah (laughs) yeah now i know uh just just before we started today we were talking a little bit because you're a kind of a rut post hunt post rut hunt 
guy. That's kind of your bread and butter time in the woods. Yeah, and sure. um, you know, I'm definitely a, a Halloween on guy, and um, you know, we were talking about it a little bit. I I started this year hunting in Illinois, and if you remember, it was really warm uh, till about November fourth, and um, you know, I don't know if it's uh, first, first of all, I'm not as tough as I used to be. You know, I grew up in cowboy boots and goulashes and a Noshkosh coverall with a hoodie on it. And mom sent maybe some hot chocolate and I had a, a loose, a, a loose uh, fit stocking hat on. Um, today, you know, I would tell you technologies came a long ways. And when I started putting in Illinois, we went from a 70 degree day down to mid 20s with a 30 mile an hour wind. So I mean, first of all, when your body can't warm up to get in, in the seasonal spirit of things, um, and then you're forced with, you know, a weather like that, you get cold and, and you, you, you guys both know it. You can't kill things. Definitely that time you can't kill things unless you're able to sit there all day. I mean, sometimes magic happens and, and, and they come through right away in the morning or maybe take a break and go back in the evening. But my strategy that I employ when I start hunting, think about, you know, post Halloween, uh, through Thanksgiving, I am in, in the stand all day. And the only way you can be in the stand all day is you're comfortable and that you're warm and you're not like, you know, so miserable you want to get out. Um, so, you know, I, I just I've just been really impressed with our technology advancements. You know, one of the things that um, I'm really happy about is our heated vest. We've been we've had that for three years now. And, you know, I, I, I take less of the stand now than I used to because of, you know, thermal properties of whether it's great base layer or great outer shell uh, fabrics and, and jackets and pants, or it's things like uh, heated vests. And um, so as you guys know, you can't be there or you can't kill something if you're not there. So I like to be comfortable. And, and uh, so definitely when I take my toolkit uh, to the field, um, I have uh, all the, the pieces and parts to make sure I can stay in the stand. And, and that's key for me. I had a guy you know, hunting with me. I had a guy hunting with me last week and he's kind of new to hunting and said, What do I need to get clothes wise? And I said, Well, it's gonna be twenty degrees one morning. I says, He's need some cold weather gear. And he said, Well, you just tell me what I need, and that's all I get. And I said, You need the fortress from from Scentlock. And uh he told me he won't got done. He said, Dude, I got hot. The guy's sitting there sweating. And I'm like, Yeah, it'll do that to you. <laughs> Let's uh you know, you bring up a couple of really good points that First one is, is you're not going to connect with a buck or anything for that matter if you're sitting on the couch. And because I've taken some heat throughout the years of, you know, maybe maybe spending a few bucks on gear that, you know, not everybody felt was was critical. But I can tell you that if if I'm out there and comfortable and I'm still out there when they're not because they're cold or they're getting heated up in the truck, then I'm going to be more successful just like you talked about. And the other thing is, you know, heated garments. Now you, you see them around. I know yours. I know you guys have them. I've been trying to get my hands on one for a year or so now, because I think you guys are perpetually sold out. So they must be doing <laughs> well. Um, but it, it's funny because, you know, several years ago, I showed up at a hunting camp in, in Montana and I, I brought a couple of battery powered things, man. You would not believe the heckling that came across. It was a leadership event and there were like 30 people there and I caught all kinds of grief and everybody was making fun of me. And then when I'm, when I'm laying out, you know, I'm sitting out there and it's four degrees or four below, whichever, I can't remember which one it was. And I was still able to function when a lot of other people couldn't. The next year, I showed up to that same meeting and that same hunt, and I was not the only one with battery-powered gear that second year. Once you try that, once you see what it can do for you, it's a game changer. It really is. Well, and Jason, you, you guys probably know this, but you know, I, I think there's two other aspects. Is you know, you keep your core body warm, um, your extremities stay warm as well from toes to fingers. So you get that at advantage. You know, when your body starts cooling down, it 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 circulates less blood to the extremities. So you keep your core warm and, and your hands and feet stay warmer. And then second of all, no one talks about this, but you know, um when you can take a layer less in the woods, 
you, you definitely manage you know perspiration a lot more which has to do with stink of the deer and and also you don't get you know you get wet you get cold so that's a big yep. deal and i'd say the last thing safety you know when you're not all tree stands have a you know nice set of sticks going up some people use screwing tree steps i get a couple of old cottonwoods that have to angle up around to get in they're great killing stands but you know just the agility and flexibility you get with less layers on you know keeps you safer getting up in the stand and then even when you're up in the stand allows you to move around and make shots and proves your form less clothes proves your form so there's a lot of other added benefits just in being comfortable that that i don't think get talked about very much as it relates to you know taking less in the stand yeah i've i've done that for years where i've I've typically been about a half a layer short of perfect warmth just because it's that extra, you know, layer that you're not wearing. That's that sometimes that bulk that lets you make a better shot or lets you, you know, depending on what you're doing, like you say, I I hadn't even considered, you know, climbing into a stand. Um, But for me, it's all about the shots. I want to not have, too much big bulk on me when it comes time because you're sitting there for you know hours or days or who knows how long you sat there to get just the right shot and you you just don't want to have unnecessary bulk so if you can stay warmer and more trimmed down and not have just the massive bulk um, those are all very good advantages in my book well, I learned a lot too about shooting form. You know, um, you can put the bow in the same part of your hand and think you're not clo- and keep your grip open and do everything like normal. But I found through through you know torque management tools like I use the IQ Bow Sight, and you know one of the things that that has probably helped me the most is for some reason when I get layered up, um, and I, and it may feel exactly like the same form, the same hand position, same anchor, and everything inherently you'll get a little torque you know and and one of the things i learned about about cold weather hunt it does affect the bow shot so um you know to the degree that you can keep more like normal like your shooting practices um you know um i think it's it's even better so um yeah it's exciting it's been good fall for a company uh continue to love all the the pictures we get every year the gripping grins and you know, the experiences that are created and the memories and stories that are written that Hollywood can never dream up. So we're, you know, looking back, very blessed, very fortunate that, you know, uh, brands in a great spot. Our partnerships are in a good spot. And a lot of people had great experiences with their product this year. So um, overall, if I think about the whole recap of fall, it's been been a blessed fall, to say the least. Good. Now, if you had to say what you know we're talking about the vest is that it but if you had to pick you know a couple of items that you're i don't know maybe more uh, proud of or want to highlight or let people know about excited about what what would some of those be i mean would the vest be among those i would yeah. think so just because it's exciting for me but yeah i think dylan you know started out i'll just stay in the late season hunting aspect because it's most appropriate right now Definitely the, the 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 fortress park and bibs, which Dylan referenced, and you know that's a fully waterproof garment, bib and parka. So that's a great a great performer. One of my personal favorites is the divergence. The divergent um, is a half zip and it has side zips and it's got a nice kangaroo pocket on it. it has Primaloft Gold, which is the the best of the best insulation factor that you can get in the industry, and it's a it's definitely a soft and a very quiet uh, performing garment. And like I said, that kangaroo pocket's huge for me. Um, and, you know, it comes with a pan as well. So when I'm in cold season, I use that as well as the heated vest. And I use the heated vest as needed as I get start to get cold. And uh, that's probably my favorite. And I will tell you, I've used everything. <laughs> I've used all the competitive product. And I, I couldn't be more proud about, you know, um, our scent, through our scent, uh, uh, technology in in our garments, the divergent pant bit or pant and uh, parka, and definitely the heated vest and our base layer. It's just a a great uh, great setup. Certainly, we have everything from early season to mid season. But in the height of the of the post rut, if you will, activity, people hunting full weather. You know, cold weather coming across the Midwest today, and 
and coming to East Cub, I tell people they don't have one there. They don't know what you're missing. So excited about that. And as we mentioned earlier, the ATA show is coming up where we debut our, our new product for 2023. And uh, certainly we'll have some exciting news there. So uh, stay tuned to our social channels and, uh, and that'll be our unveiling. And uh, we'll bring some of that too to the uh, Pope Young show. So. You heard it here first, folks. He'll have it at the Pope and Young show. <laughs> with the vest and with the divergent jacket, I'm pretty sure you could live in the Arctic for the rest of your life and get hot. Like, <laughs> if I mean, it is, I think I got down to um, about 14 one morning with it. And uh, yeah, you're, you're getting a little hot even at that. I mean, with that, that uh, series. Aaron, I did. Uh, I focused on taking my son more this year. He's only four, and we did not. <laughs> we did not kill any deer. I'll just say it the nicest way I know how. <laughs> I love that boy to death. There were times he just like straight up forgot we were hunting. Like he would look at me like, "Hey, Dad, I forgot," and he covered his mouth. I'm like, "Dude, like, come on, man." And uh, no, but no, that's, it was that's fun. Tough, Dylan, because I'm like I'm pretty type A eh? and. Um, I, I tell you what, I changed to a different guy when I started taking my kids out and, you know, I chose turkey hunting was great, you know, in, in Nebraska with crossbows that you could do in, instead of the whole big bang theory. And, you know, when they're young like that, just trying to get really ethical shots and teach, you know, target acquisition. And then they're ready to graduate up to the, the bow or the shotgun. And I tell you what, whenever the kids want to go, I, I went, I went home. That is, um, just trying to make it fun and maybe, you know, be like my son, AJ, at some point, I'll tell you what, he's pushing me these days. And, and for that kid, he's, he's not like I was a kid. I was killing everything when I was a kid, you know, and he, he was going, um, but now he, he wants to go, he wants to go more than I do, which is kind of crazy for me to say. So glad you're taking your son out there. And, uh, yeah. you know, sometimes it's not always about the hunt, right? No, I, uh, I did end up shooting a buck. He wasn't with me. Um, but you know, I still made a big deal about it. I'm like, bub, look, you know, you helped me hang the tree stand. You helped me put out the cameras. You helped me. And uh, I said, we, we killed this buck together. And he, he said, you talked about your son having a big taxidermy bill. My boy said, I want to put his whole body in my room. And I said, well, <laughs> no, <laughs> not yeah. even close, but, uh, yeah. we got it. We, we're doing a European mount for him to put it in his room. So. You know, just say, hey, we'll put the whole body, you know, maybe not in your room, but how about in the freezer in the garage? Yes. And then, no, he did say uh, later on, we were doing something, that, you know, afterwards, and I was taking care of the meat or whatever, and he said, Dad, do we get to eat his meat? And I'm like, of course. <laughs> yeah, we do. So that, that'll make a dad proud. Yeah, we're uh, we're pretty excited. We, uh, we'll we have uh, one of the back straps uh, over Christmas vacation, you know, he we had to send him back on the airplane after Thanksgiving. So I got a back strap that is all uh, will be thought out or Christmas vacation. We'll do the right celebratory thing, celebrate the animal, celebrate the story, celebrate our, you know, just our opportunity to be in outdoors. So I'm looking forward to that meal because that, to me, when you get that first meal of the buck or doe you harvested, it just comes, you know, from field to table and it allows you to just really reflect upon how doggone lucky we are. Yeah. Of course. You know, I I grew up, you know, I mean, we just ate wild game. It's just how it was. And, you know, that was mule deer and blacktail deer on the West Coast. And I don't want to start an argument here or anything, but the whitetail I brought home last year from Wisconsin was pretty darn good. <laughs> that was it. So I'm not saying it was better. I'm just saying it was pretty darn good. Well, I'll so, ask you, Jason, my very favorite meat is antelope, and that will, that'll that be a controversy among a lot of folks, but I'll tell you, antelope is definitely, and I don't know how this works, you think that, you know, corn-fed whitetail or whatnot would be the best eat, but some of my best eating has been antelope, and of course, you know, it all comes down to, you know, if they've been, you know, how you take care of them, but I, that's my favorite meat, believe it or not, and not that I'm not proud of that elk I got in the freezer, because she's eating pretty good, too. Uh, but uh, antelope is probably one of my 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 favorites. Yeah. You know, I've heard people say that about antelope, and I mean, for me, elk is just at the top. I know moose is really good. Um, the one that surprises me is that every once in a while you hear people talk about um, a cougar, 
And I guess back in the day, that was kind of the mountain man. That was their favorite go-to was the, they like that sweet meat of that cougar. Well, a couple of animals I haven't killed. I haven't killed a mountain lion and nor have I killed a, a moose. And definitely guy probably needs to put them on the bucket list, but years are getting shorter and time's not our friend. <laughs> and bodies aren't either. <laughs> well, yeah, well, I'll tell you what, if you have a bucket list, actually, if anybody out there listening has a bucket list, bring it with you to Reno, because we have, I mean, we're going to have some legendary world-class bucket list stuff. Um, we're just, just announcing the convention raffle, and uh, Dylan, can we talk about that? Because we're going to be up and running, aren't we? Yes. Um, Drum roll. Give me one. I'll tell you what. And it just changed again literally this morning. So we have, so on our convention raffle, this is the big big one that we do, and it helps fund our conservation program. So I know this year we're partnering with, uh, last year we did some stuff with Mule Deer Foundation. This year we're doing stuff with Wild Sheep. Um uh, some some really good kind of core projects that that benefit you know as many species as as possible is what we try to do and anyway this this convention raffle is one of the main funding tools for that program of ours and we went back to our our outfitters some outfitters who've been doing this with us for a long time you'll see them they'll, most of them will be in reno anyway um we said, Hey, we want to go a little bit bigger this year. And they're like bigger than last year. And I'm like, yeah, we're like, well, okay, let's see what we can do. And they all, they all went big. So we have um, from McMillan river adventures. We have a Yukon moose hunt um, with Don Lind and his crew, which is, I mean, that's a bucket list. If you haven't done it, it's probably on your bucket list. Um, those things are just huge. So that is that is one of the four choices. The second choice, which was the one that was picked last year, is with Barella. As uh, Peter Barella put a hunt together last year, he did a mountain goat black bear combo, and that was the one that was chosen. And this year, we said, "Hey, we want to go a little bit bigger." So he did a mountain goat brown bear combo. Oh, um, yeah. so. <laughs> shazam you know there and that's one of four choices so you know and then the the i think the biggest one's parents rainy pass lodge it's and this one's we talked to steve and he has been this guy every time we talk to steve he does something big for us i mind-blowing my i don't think he's ever said no and just just and you talk to people in the industry anyone that's hunted with him has gives glowing reviews i mean i met him jack frost introduced me to him i don't know five years ago or something and it, you're just like okay dude is this real are you introducing me to somebody or are you like working them for something and it, it no and then you talk to other people that have hunted with him and it's just same thing so once again the you know the best of the best for this so steve put together a package for us that includes a doll sheep, a brown bear, a caribou, and a black bear. Yeah. All four species, one hunt. I, I don't know. Wow, I guess is the only word that I that comes to mind there. That's awesome. That sounds like a that sounds like a decade to me. Like that's not a good season. That's not a good year. That's a good de decade. If you were to get four of those, if you were to get three of those, if you were to get two of those, that's, I mean, that's just unbelievable. So once again, that's, that's with parents, rainy pass lodge, which is, I mean, tip of the spear quality out outfitter. And that's choice number three. And then choice number four and the winner gets to pick whichever one they want. And the, the fourth one that they have to choose from is Machweer came up with an Africa package. Um, and these guys have been so good to us. They did a, uh, last year they donated a, a 
what was it, a lion hunt and some other things for our convention. Yeah. They participated in our raffle. Last year, they they put up two Cape buffaloes in Africa. And then they're like, oh, we didn't get picked. And, and so this year we went to them and we said, guys, we want to go bigger. And they're like, oh, how big? And we're like, bigger. And so Bob Grace, um, who's, who's our contact there, he's he worked a package. So this choice in Africa, and this is this is all all fair chase stuff. So it's it's a uh lion, Cape Buffalo, Sable, Lioness, and a crocodile. Sounds like a big hey. You want to go to Africa? Well, here you now you don't have to go four times. You just go once and get them all. I just, so anyway, that's. Uh, which that's one are you our, choosing, Aaron? Which one would you choose out of all those? I'd probably go north. You know, I've done, I haven't done that in Africa, but, you know, I, I certainly like, you know, what, where I'm at my, in my life with uh, my uh, physical ability, I'd probably, probably go north. Which one? I'd which one of the probably, three? Three of them are north. Yeah, I'd probably do the, I'd probably like shoot a moose really bad, a little brown bear. Uh, it'd be a hard choice, really would. That, that, that four, the four species, uh, that would be pretty fun too. Uh, yeah, I don't know. We'd have to uh, figure out what would work with work. <laughs> I mean, just, just, could you imagine being put in that position? Cause there's not a, there's not a bad hunt that you wouldn't want to go on, on the list. I mean, they're all just legendary um i don't know what would you take dylan uh definitely doll sheep brown bear caribou black bear that that's one call, a, that's an that one calls to me the most dylan yeah what would be your, what would be your key animal that you'd, you'd want to accomplish the most in that for some uh grizzly yeah i think a grizzly yeah. with a bow and arrow would be something unlike anything you know being on ground level i i think it would be it would be unbelievable yeah, I think uh, grizzly for sure. I mean, uh, doll sheep would be really cool. Um, caribou. I mean, everything on that list. <laughs> like, yeah, I'd, I'd like to kill that. How about you, yeah. Jason? I, you know, I don't know. I really don't know because I everything is so good. I mean, a Yukon moose is just something that that's, you know, they're just huge. And you look at that and it would be something that would be amazing. And I've always wanted to shoot a, a mountain goat. And so that would have to be on the list, the mountain. But then all of a sudden you look at it and, and, you know, I mean, who, who do you want to hunt with? Don Lynn, Peter Brella, Steve Perrins. I mean, my gosh, you, you know, then you look at Rainy Pass Lodge and that, that once again, they're in the same second to none. And that's a, a four animal combo that where else am I ever going to get a chance to do that? Which I don't, I don't know that. And then Africa, I don't, I don't know. I honestly don't know. I don't know which way I'd go. I I would have, until last week when some things changed, I'd have probably gone with the the Rainy Pass Lodge just because, you know, I, I'm a, I don't know. I'm a numbers guy. I like to shoot a lot, I guess. And so, you know, four animals sounds better than one or two. Um, so I'd have probably gone parents, but then when Machwer came back with, you know, and added a sable and a Cape Buffalo, I mean, those are things that are, that are on my Africa list. So, I mean, yeah, talk about a taxidermy bill. Holy smokes. <laughs> and you look at it and, and you're like, you know what, that's going to be, whoever wins that it's going to be like probably the greatest day of their whole year. And it's probably also going to be one of the toughest days of their whole year. Cause they're going to have to make that choice. Yeah. I just, I, I, I hope, you know, for, for the sake of just seeing the look on the face, I mean, it's nice to call people and get the joy over the phone, but it is something special when, when they're there. So I don't know. And, and this year we're limiting it. We're going to do um, straight up 1500 tickets. Hmm. They're a hundred bucks a piece. At least a bad choice is still a good choice. So. Yeah, there's no bad choice. I mean, and that's the funny thing is because the 
the, the quote unquote worst choice of those four is someone else's number one. It's all just personal preference. So uh, I don't know. It's wow. Well, I'd love to. I'd love to have that as my biggest problem of the day. Picking it between like them. It's a, it's a call out to get yourself a ticket. Yeah. Yeah, and it's like what. Well, what do we usually say, Dylan? If if you feel lucky, buy a ticket. If you're not feeling lucky, buy a bunch of tickets. Yeah. So anyway, we're gonna we'll get the uh, we'll put the link up there for everybody if you want to get them. And I would get them early because we we do expect to sell that thing out. We're gonna draw it at convention. I think we're gonna have. I know Machuir is gonna be there. Um, Perrins is gonna be there. Peter Barella is usually at convention and I, I don't know if Don Lind is going to make it. I've talked to him and he's going to try to work it. So we may have all four of those outfitters in attendance there. So how exciting would that be? Yeah, for sure. Anyway, a lot, lot, lot of cool stuff going on. Um, we're excited about it. Like, you know, it's, you know, the partnership with you guys, once again, thank you very much for, for jumping on with us there and, and helping us figure that out. It's, it's exceeding expectations and, and definitely an exciting, exciting thing. So. Yeah. Well, I appreciate Dylan, you and Jason's time today. Thanks as well. Uh, give me a call and get me on the phone. It's always great to talk, uh, talk business and talk passion and, and, you know, talk about the Pope and Young. So thank you for uh, all your support of our brand as well. And, and uh, I'm sure we'll see you uh, in a couple of weeks, probably at ATA and, and uh, uh, the, the convention. So thanks again and uh, appreciate your time. Yeah. Thank you for joining us. We sure appreciate it.